Hello denizens of YouTube, Mike here, and today I am super super excited to have a reveal video for you guys. I have a new lightsaber to show you guys. And by new, it's partially true. It's not a completely new saber. Um, it's not one of the crossover sabers that I was talking about, nor is it a saber for a customer, although I do have one or two of those lined up actually, so I'm very excited about that. But right now, this is actually my personal saber that I have redone. And well, one, because I wanted to redo it, I wanted to make it better, and two, to also be an experiment to see how the new electronics would work out for, you know, future builds. And so far, I think it's worked out fantastically. So without further ado, I give you the Sentinel Mark II, also known as Shizuka Hogosha. That is the new name for it which is Japanese for Silent Guardian. And the reason why I went with a Japanese name is one, because I studied Japanese for a year in college, and I fell in love with the language. I absolutely love it. And any excuse I have to use that language, I will gladly do. And also because, you know, when I first made this lightsaber, when I first made the Sentinel, I called it the Sentinel because I really liked the idea of the Jedi Sentinels, doing more than just a stereotypical act as a knight, act as a healer, or a debater, or a guardian, kind of someone who works behind the scenes, is still dedicated to fighting evil, but, you know, isn't all grandiose about it, it's, they're more subtle. But then I started to think about it, and I realized that I'm kind of more, at least me personally, I feel like I walk between a guardian and a sentinel. I, I prefer to be subtle, I prefer to kind of work in the shadows, but I also love combat, and I love, well not necessarily love, but I really appreciate being able to potentially protect my friends and my family. That's why I've been doing martial arts for close to like five or six years, and I'm not saying I'm good, I'm not saying that I can guarantee that I'll protect anybody, but it still feels better knowing that I've at least learned and I might be better equipped to do so than I was before. So, that being said though, that's why I changed the name of this saber to Shizuka Hogosha, Silent Guardian. So kind of like an in-between the Sentinel and the Guardian class. But that being said, let's now get into the actual saber itself. So if you guys remember the Sentinel when I first made it, the thing was huge thing was really huge. I actually measured it um, a couple of days ago, and it was 16 inches as it originally was. And it was very difficult for me to wield. Not, I would say cumbersome. Cumbersome is a better word. Um, I would always hit the pommel of the saber against myself or against my arm when I tried to swing it, and the weight distribution didn't feel very good. So it made swinging it kind of awkward. So I wanted to make it a little bit shorter and see if I can fix that weight distribution problem, make it feel more comfortable. Also, when I had made the Sentinel, I had no idea about how efficacious set screws were. And I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to risk holding my blade in with a set screw. So I went the Nubish route and I solvent welded my blade to the hill. And on the one hand, it definitely, you know, wasn't going anywhere, but I also couldn't really carry my saber anywhere that I wanted to. It basically, you know, because it was a solid piece. So I basically, you know, I had to kind of maneuver it about if I brought it places, and it made me think twice about bringing it places because I'm like, oh, I don't know if I have room. So that was another thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to work on putting a set screw in because after using it with the Carolina Reaper and the Dire Wolf, I realized, okay, those are pretty effective. They are able to hold the blade in against even, you know, good good dueling, good smacking around. So I was like, okay, I realize it works even with PVC, so let's do that for this saber. So that's what I did, and I also wanted to change the electronics because when I did the electronics for the first time, it was, again, very noobish. I believe 
when I first set it up, I used a single Luxian Rebel Amber LED with two, two AAA battery packs wired in series for a total of 3.4, no, 3.0 volts and two 2.2 ohm resistors wired in series as well. And when I did the Ohm's Law looking back on it, I'm like, hmm, did not know how to do my electronics. But after doing more research and, you know, looking at forums and looking at tutorials, I realized, okay, I know how to, I think I know how to actually do this, so we're going to give it a try. And that was actually the previous video that I released. Those electronics that I showed you guys, that is what's inside this Sabre. We have a single Luxon Rebel Lime LED powered by two 3.7 volt 2200 milliamp lithium ion batteries wired in series for a grand total of 7.4 volts at 2200 milliamps and a 700 milliamp buck puck acting as the, regulating cur as the current regulator. And this was all after talking to a representative at the Luxon Rebel site. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm have a table right now, and as you can see, it's a little, it's a very rickety table, so I'll try to keep my elbows off of that. But yeah, that was actually after talking to a representative at Lux and Rebel. I was like, hey, you know, I want to run your LEDs. What do you recommend? And they said, well, you need a voltage that's at least two volts over the maximum forward voltage, and we recommend that you run it at the recommended current. We know that we have a max current, but like with the greens and the blues at 1,000, but we pretty much recommend that all of your LEDs are all the LEDs are run at 700. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to argue you. You know, you are representative of this company. I'm going to take your word for it. I know that in the Saber community, whites, greens, and blues are run at 1,000, but I figured, you know what? I'm going to go with the actual LED representative. So that's what I did. So yeah. And to complete the circuit, we have a nice... Just a simple metal latching switch, which is so quiet. Oh, it's so nice. Compared to that guarded switch, which made that loud clack, you, there's no sound. So cool. I'm, I'm a really big fan. Um, so, as you can see, this did not change from the first build, the end piece and the pommel. I did, however, repaint the pommel, and I added some holes for ventilation. Not for sound. Eventually, maybe I will do sound, but for now, this is just for air. Just so that air can escape the saber and we can have a little bit of ventilation. Um, other than that, nothing really much changed. But then this new shroud piece is new because originally there was the shroud piece that went all the way up to like here. I scrapped that piece because I tried to sand it because like I basically cut the blade out. the custom saber blade that I had and then I tried to sand out the blade that was still stuck there and I realized it would take way less time and frustration just to carve a new hill a new shroud so I was like okay I'll just do that so yeah just a simple simple tube with um, windows cut out in the side which gives it a very nice grip it kind of feels like a katana-esque grip like a more oval shape and I really like that and then it just has the diagonal cut right here. Simple, which I like. And then just used some 832 Allen wrench screwable screws. Used two up here and one on the front and it holds very nice. And also for some detailing, uh, let's see if I can put it up here. There you go. I carved my favorite Japanese phrase into the front of the hilt. And I know that the kanji are reversed for you guys, but all you fans of Japanese might recognize uh, the kanji as Zenko Kouro, which literally translates to, let's see if I can get my finger right, tiger in the front and wolf in the back. That's the literal translation, but it also, what it means to people is out of the frying pan and into the fire, one catastrophe followed right on the heels of another, between a rock and a hard place, and I don't know, just something about that phrase, like, I, one, just imagining a, a tiger in front and a wolf in the back, that just sounds really, really cool, and also just, I don't know, 
that phrase always just kind of made me laugh. It was kind of like always reminded me like protagonists and like stories, you know, the ones that have really like seen stuff and they're just like, well, here we go again. When something goes wrong, everyone else is freaking out that something's gone wrong and they're just like, here we go again. And it's just, I don't know, I just really like that phrase. It's my favorite Japanese phrase, so I figured I would carve it in. Um, let me see if I can think of anything else. No, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, almost forgot. So here you can see the two set screws, one for the LED module and the other for the blade. I actually have the Allen wrench packed up because I'm actually moving apartments in about a week. So that's why this still has the blade in. I figured, you know what, it's fine. I won't take it out and pull it back in. You guys know that's what it's for. I can pull this blade out, but it's nice and secure. Pull it, smack it, you know, no issues. And last but not least, the color. So let's fire the sucker up. Yeah. And this is a Saber Forge 32 inch blade. Love it. All the way to the tip. So cool. And I know I'm using a low quality camera, so, you know, maybe on a higher quality camera, it won't look as cool, but it, it, I'm, I mean, like, I'm looking at it and I'm geeking out. I love the color. Here, let me see if I can show you on my shirt. That's the color. It's a lime, it's a lime green. It's like a yellowish green. On, and on cameras, it looks like an acid green, like a really yellowish green. Here, you can, it kind of is, has a more greenish tint to it, but, oh, oh, and it feels, feels so good. The grip feels so much better, so much more comfortable. So, yep, really, really happy with how it came out. And actually, hang on, one moment, one quick moment. There we go. Turn off the lights. Get this one right here. There we go. Let's see if I can. Hmm. It's actually, it's actually really funny. Can't even really see the color. It just kind of blocks it all out. It's just looks white, actually. It's kind of weird. But yeah. Hmm. Well... The camera's making it look white, which is actually really funny, but yeah, no, it's a, it's a lime green. It's a very nice lime shade. <sighs> yeah, it's actually better. You can actually see it better in the light, so, well, there you go. But yeah, and you know, for a single dye LED, it's fantastic. It's so fantastic. So... Yeah, that's um, that's it, guys. This is the Sentinel Mark II, also known as Shizuka Hogosha, my new personal saver, and I'm very happy. I'm very excited that it came out well. Um, no issues whatsoever. And yeah, I actually have, I have a customer lined up in June, and I will hopefully be done with that saber. I will have that saber completed by the end of the month, and you guys will get to see that. But until then, take care. Look forward to the next video. And may the force be with you, always.